Chapter 11 An hour or two later I found myself sitting in a small room at the police station. I was still handcuffed, but now the cuffs were in front of me, so I could drink some water from a paper cup they had given me. My mouth felt parched, but the water didn't seem to wet it. A youngish man in a suit came in, looking very tired and drinking a cup of hot coffee, along with a uniformed police officer. He sat down across from me and refilled my water cup from a pitcher. So, you want to tell me what happened? Aren't I supposed to have a lawyer or something? I said. This is just an interview. I looked around for a few moments. It didn't seem like an interview. What do you want to know? I said. Why don't you just tell me your side of the story? I don't know what to tell you, I said truthfully. Come on, don't bullshit me. You had a fight with Brett and used a wrench to beat him up. He had to have done something to deserve it, right? What? I said. The man in the suit shrugged a little. I get it, man. Your mom's dating a new guy. He's a real asshole. She won't listen about him. He embarrasses you, maybe pushes you a little too far. It's real common, man. I get it. I don't get it, I said. Who is Brett? I just want to know what he did to make you do it, that's all. You mean the guy? Yeah, the guy. What did he do? I just... I woke up and he was in my bed. The cop gave me an incredulous look. Listen, think about it. Maybe we can get you some paper so you can get your thoughts in order, yeah? As he said that, the door behind him opened up and, to my utter shock, Sal walked in. He was wearing a tracksuit and drinking a large cup of 7-Eleven coffee. I got this, Tom, he said. It's my case now. We're just getting started, the sitting detective said. Well, now you're finished. He's been on my caseload, so he's mine. We're not even supposed to process juveniles here, you know? No way, Sal. You know what happened. This isn't a juvie case. Go ask the captain if you like, Sal said. It's my case now. Beat it. Go on. Sal's voice was deep and calm, but left no room for debate. He stepped around beside me and put a hand in his pocket as he looked at the younger men. Tom growled and got up. The uniformed cop followed him out the door. They left it open. Sal produced a key from his pockets and removed my cuffs. Better, yeah? He said, tossing the handcuffs on a nearby table. Yeah, thanks. You're in my custody now, so I may have to put them back on to transport you. I shrugged. Sal closed the door. We kind of figured out what's happening, he said. Tom wasn't in the loop on your situation. That I'm crazy? Uh, sort of. More like he's missing all the context. He's treating you like a suspect. I apologize. I'm not? I know you killed Brett Hammerstein, but I also know what he was doing. I'm working a little ahead here, but I'm pretty sure the doctors will all agree with my narrative when things are through and we get all the evidence sorted out. I'm never wrong about this sort of thing. How bad of trouble am I in? Sal pulled a chair close to mine and sat down. He chuckled and gave me a smile that looked half sad. Kid, there's not a jury in the state that will convict you for killing that perv. You're going to get no bill for sure. There's no way the DA will want to press charges on something like this. No way. Why not? Sal chuckled again, but his eyes held the same sadness. Almost like the huge man was tearing up. Hey, you want a snack? I got some Twinkies and stuff. Sure. All right. Be right back. He got up and left the room, then returned with a few wrapped snack cakes. I opened one up and ate ravenously. I realized I had only had one meal in the last few days. Hungry? Yeah. So why am I not in trouble? Sal smiled. He scratched his nose. I'll tell you the story. I already know it's true enough. You can see how it fits. Your mom has a boyfriend she doesn't tell you about. His face got gravely serious. He comes over sometimes, which is normal. But she doesn't know he's a convicted child rapist. He tries something when she's asleep. Kid fights back. What? Yeah, unfortunately, son, I see this a lot. It's why I'm never wrong. Guys like that date the mom to get to the kids. More pieces came together in my mind. He was touching me. I... I thought it was something else. He kept trying to come in my room. I stood up almost knocking over my water. He was coming in and touching me, over and over. Relax, Sal said. Have another Twinkie. I know you've been through a lot, so excuse my easy manner. 
Frank calls it a defense mechanism. He took a long sip of coffee, then folded his big, meaty hands in front of his face. Cops like me, who have seen this kind of stuff. He shook his head and looked hard at me. The tears that had been hinted at as he spoke were now filling his lower lids. We dream about sick fucks like this guy getting killed. You did a good thing, Bill. You deserved it. You did a real good thing. Even if it doesn't feel good right now. I sat down in silence and thought about it all. What kind of doctors do I have to see now? For the case, I mean. Psych. You'll have to have a physical exam, too. Sorry about it, but we have to do our diligence. I put my hands in my face and cried. The release was almost cathartic. I was crazy, after all. But not at all the way everyone thought. After a few minutes, Sal said, I'm gonna have to take you down to juvenile processing. It's across town. I'll get you a hot meal on the way. Don't worry about it, though. It's gonna be fine, son. I'm gonna make damn sure of that, all right? I went home with my dad later that day. I told him everything, and he got upset. It was the most emotional I had ever seen him. It was also the first time I had seen him cry. I called Anna and told her, too. She cried, too, or at least I thought she did over the phone. But it seemed different, more like a relief. She asked if I believed the dream was a true vision. I told her I thought it was, but she'd been given the dream instead of me because I wouldn't have believed it, or known who St. Anthony was. Before I hung up, I told her I loved her. She didn't exactly say it back. She told me if that was true, I would be at church, because that was where she needed me to be. So on Sunday, I went to Mass. I had no idea what was going on, but I thought it was where I should be. My father didn't give any protest as he drove me. He would never be a true believer. He was too hardened and clever enough to explain away every miracle in his mind. But he would at least let me find my own way, and I was thankful for that. The DA refused to charge me, just like Sal promised. My story was all in the news, minus my name, since I was a minor. Apparently, my mother's boyfriend, Brett, was indeed a convicted rapist. There was some debate with the authorities over whether she knew what he was doing to me. There were a lot of instances of molestation, as I found out with the help of the psychologist. I think due to that controversy, my father ended up with custody of me, which I was happy about. I never went back to my old room at the house. My mother sold it as soon as she could. She sold the funeral home early the next year and went to work at some other place in the next city over. I also never took Thorazine or any antipsychotic ever again. Dr. Gracht quickly declared me to be in the recovery phase of schizophrenia and moved me into weekly therapy. My father declined a prescription for an antidepressant. I talked to Father James at one point, sometime after everything went down. Father, why did God allow this to happen to me? Look at where you are, he said. How would you be here if this had not happened to you? Couldn't God have just told me to come? Would you have listened? I thought about it a moment. Probably not. Then he had to prepare you first to listen before he could speak to you. But I guess this is my father talking. If God loves me, why didn't he intervene? He didn't intervene? I remembered the events leading up to each battle, including Anna's dream. I understand. I remember something Anna told me about St. Anthony, that God let demons torment him as a test. Maybe it was something like that. If it was, you passed. We're blessed to know you, William. You humble me, you know. <laughs>